Hello, my name is Jody, and I'm here to tell you how to lucid dream, or at least give you some tics, tips, tricks, and techniques that can help you lucidly dream. A little bit of business first, I'm speaking quietly because it's always bedtime at my channel and I don't like to wake people up. And for you, those of you who've um, been watching my videos for a while, and you may notice that uh, this is a different cat. Um, just real quick, okay? I don't want to take too much time on this one. Uh, I'm sorry, he was old. Um, he had a really good life, and he did an excellent job of being my cat. Um, slow cat clap to, Lin, to Yin Yang. Uh, well done, well done. And I have some notes here underneath Sophie who is the new cat who's come to keep me company. And um, so I'm going to have to wear glasses for this, but we'll start. Let's see how far I can get without seeing the notes. Um, I'm going to try and go through your wild, mild, and dialed real quick because there's already a lot out there for them. And um, there's a lot of videos about it. A lot of people already know about it a lot. So I'll probably... Um, skip through them as quick as I can and then maybe talk a little bit about hypnosis which is my specialty and we also have uh, yoga nidra and you see I'm looking at the notes and I can't see a thing I'm not wearing my glasses so yeah we also have yoga nidra which is um, like your Indian Swami Hindu type of thing please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong and then we have your um, Tibetan dream yoga, which is uh, Tibetan monk stuff, and Tibetan monks are fun, so I like them. And uh, at the end, I'd also like to just go over real quick a little bit about um, lucid dreaming, anxiety and fear, and maybe even nightmares too. But to begin with, what is lucid dreaming? Well, lucid dreaming is when you, um, a lot of people say, was this lucid dreaming? I think it's more of on a continuum. The, the textbook answer is when you become aware that you're dreaming, you wake up, become aware while you're dreaming, while you're dreaming, and um, are able to control what happens in the dream. I think there's uh, right from very vivid dreams that you really remember and you had some awareness in, um, through to dreams where you say, I'm dreaming, and you know you're dreaming, but you don't, um, you can't control what's happening in the dream right through to where, of course, you're doing uh, whatever you want in a dream. If you're my daughter, uh, my teen daughter, she shrugged and said, well, doesn't everyone just take off all their clothes and fly? That's all I ever do when I lose a dream. Um, I did when I was younger, uh, but now um, I'm getting a little old to get naked and fly. I'm, I was just playing with cats in my lucid dream today. That's what you do when you get old or older. Anyway, so so let's have some fun with our consciousness while we're unconscious. And we'll start with um, wild, uh, which is wake-induced lucid dreaming. And that is, no, no, I'm going to do mild and dialed. And I'm going to squish them together real quick here. Okay, mild is mnemonic induced lucid dreaming where you just remember um, dream signs, things that you see through the daytime. I'm going to start reading, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in front of the camera much lately. I'm used to hiding behind the lava lamp and, and this has got me a little nervous. I'm going to be honest, just a little nervous. So please, yeah, just put up with me for now. So what have we got here? What have we got that's fun? All right, we've got our mild and wild. Um, this is where you look for dream signs. And in your dream signs, um, with me, I ask myself, what am I doing? If I'm doing something outrageous that I just normally wouldn't do, then that's often a trigger for me to say, yes, I must be dreaming. Uh, for example, because I'm walking through my house and dropping lit matches 
on, on the carpet all through through my house. So that would that would make me trigger me to say that I'm dreaming. Uh, yeah, if I'm taking my clothes off anywhere where anybody can see me, I must be dreaming. So it's almost like that you just might be lucid dreaming. It's like if you are flying without your clothes on, you just might be lucid dreaming. Or if your girlfriend is making you a sandwich, you just might be lucidly dreaming. So if something outrageous is going on, that's a really good dream sign. And she, here, well, how about we do this this way? I'm just going to take the top sheet. You can lie on the rest of the paper, okay? Because you like that. So that's um, dream signs. Then you've got your, um, your you know, uh, body parts, hands, fingers. Uh, check them out. Often counting fingers, how many fingers you have. Electronics often don't work properly, so check the clock. Um, check anything electronic, and um, that, that could help tell you whether or not you're lucidly dreaming. And uh, this, is, this is one of mine. I have never yet been able to dial 911 for an emergency call in a dream properly. So yeah, if you can't dial the phone, you just might be lucidly dreaming. So it's a way of memorizing or getting to know what your signs are to let you know that you are dreaming. I often watch my hands and see what they're doing. Um, some people say you can plug your nose and ow. Ow, that's really painful. This cat's younger than my old cat. Um, yeah, so you could plug your nose, and if you can still breathe with your nose plugged, you might be lucidly dreaming. And I'm going to show you something I keep beside my bed. I've got a couple things here that are helpful for lucid dreaming. And uh, this is for when it's really hot out, and this is for when it's not too hot out. And, and what these are, you want to hold that? Okay. What these are is their hats. A lot of people say wear a blindfold, but I find blindfolds are difficult. They fall off. You get all kinds of problems with blindfolds. So I do this. I pull this down, and then I can fold this. Uh, I can fold this up under. No lights getting in. Why this is so helpful is because. <laughs> This is fun. I'm having fun. Okay. Why this is helpful is because um, if I can see and I've got this on, I can feel it all the time, but it's not too tight. And if I can see, then it, it triggers right away to say I must be dreaming because I'm looking at something and I'm seeing things while wearing a blindfold. So there's, there's something that's helpful. And um, this is, of course, the lighter hat. Um, and while I'm at it, just real quick, we're going to throw this in. There's a bottle. Oh, that's really loud. I'm putting it away. It's calcium um, antacids. It's the cheapest way to get calcium supplements. If you take um, some calcium at bedtime, um, that's going to help. Okay? And it's, I, I don't want to get into uh, drugs, herbs, plants, or heavy duty supplements. It's just not what I follow. I'm not judging. I'm just saying not what I follow. Now, what else have I got that's good here? Um, so yeah, if you say I'm dreaming, then some people like to do a, a reality check where you put your finger through your hand and if it goes all the way through, I hear that can be very painful. Um, I don't do that. Fly, always fly. If you're flying, you must be lucidly dreaming. Take off your clothes and if, we're back to that again, and if nobody notices or cares, but that's, that's hard. You don't want to do that when you're awake. Um, and in the daytime, it's good to go around and do things like check clocks or light switches or things that count your fingers that are dream signs so that uh, you can see what's going on with, with that while you're awake so that you can see the difference while you're asleep. So, the, yeah, that's that. And now the wild method, I... I'm very fond of this method. Um, I use this one a lot, uh, where you stay, it's wake-induced lucid dreaming, and you stay awake and uh, observe yourself going to sleep and observe yourself beginning to dream. So uh, this, is, this is, I use a technique often called stop, drop, and roll, uh, but I kind of adjusted it. So I, 
Um, it's about lying still. Your brain and your body aren't as connected as you think. And your brain doesn't, okay, no, your body doesn't know whether or not your brain's sleeping. So it'll send a rollover signal and it'll tell you to roll over. And if you roll over, it knows your brain's still awake. And it also sends random itches. All of a sudden you get an itch here, an itch there. So random itches, rollover signal, um, twitches sometimes. It's just these, these things to try and make you move. So your body sends the signal to make you move. And if you move, it says, okay, brain's still awake, I'll stay awake. But if you don't move, if you stay completely still, this is where it gets fun, your body says, uh, still awake, you don't move, and it goes, oh, and it goes to sleep. And then it goes, some people don't like this, it goes into sleep paralysis. I find it very relaxing and enjoyable. Some people find it uh, really, really frightening. Nobody's ever gone into sleep par paralysis before and stayed there. You always come out of it. So you just wait a few minutes, sharpen, take a breath, wiggle your hands. People have their ways of, of getting out of it. But uh, yeah, it's, um, there's wake back to bed. I don't use that one either. Um, just because I have problems with insomnia still sometimes, I don't like to monkey with my sleep schedule. I, and, and that's just begging for insomnia for me to get up, move around for a while, then go back to bed. I do nap. Napping is my favorite lucid dreaming time. I love to lucid dream during naps. Um, so if you have that luxury, if not on a weekday, on a weekend, um, the sunlight, uh, I guess having sunlight on your brain and stuff, it uh, makes it easier to go into a hypnagogic state during nap. Yeah. So that's good to know. So we, we've kind of gone through them real quick. Um, as quick as I can. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Maybe you can watch it in pieces if I get too boring. So, um, oh, when another thing, uh, spin into dreams to, per, to prevent yourself from waking, you often can get the, uh, get excited. Uh, you say, oh, I'm dreaming. And just saying that wakes you up and, and that can be frustrating. Some people spin, rotate around, um, or will themselves back in, learn to will themselves back into the dream. Uh, for me, a lot of it, I still wake myself up sometimes when I catch myself lucid dreaming and I'm able to just will myself back into the dream. Or a lot of the time I don't, and I think it's just practice, 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 because um, I think after a while, if you get used to um, these weird altered states of consciousness that, that I like to play around with over here, um, it becomes not freaky it becomes more commonplace, so you can just relax and observe, and it, you don't get that little startle um, thing. And now let's talk about, talking about altered states of consciousness, how about hypnosis? What's up with that? I'm gonna rub my eyes. Okay, yeah, I might edit that. Or I might not, I'm not sure yet, but hypnosis, let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, I do um, a lot of, hip hypnosis videos, but I have to qualify this that a lot of what I do, I'm not sure if it is hypnosis by the classic definition where, you know, you, you create a state of confusion um, which kicks in a person's fight or flight or freeze response and then they basically just dump what they're doing in their own brain and follow you, that sort of stuff. Um, very mildly sometimes a little bit but mostly i just i'm more of a tour guide where i take you for a tour of your own mind and consciousness and just bring things to your attention you may want to contemplate if you would like um, so it's it's uh, all very voluntary very very deep relaxation there's a lot of meditation in there and um a lot of people nowadays are taking anything that's uh, non-drug induced trance, altered state of consciousness type of thingy, 
and just throwing it under the hypnosis title. And I think that's okay because it's a word people can easily understand. Um, so it's deep relaxation. You can fall, go into a light trance, but it's if you would like. Um, if you'd like to see this or you'd like to pay attention to this, um, what happens inside your mind in empty spaces, all kinds of stuff like that. So, of course, when I, when I started um, doing some stuff about lucid dreaming, because I hadn't done a video about it, so I did, uh, I thought it'd be fun to use hypnosis to induce lucid dreams. And because it is a guide, a guided tour of your consciousness, it kind of can guide you into what you need to do to lucid dream. Now, you see, I'm not working with a script. I usually write scripts and read them. And, but uh, yeah, so you, you can be guided nicely into, um, you see, if I, was, if I was doing, say, Yoga Nidra, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, there's eight stages to that. If I was to guide myself into it, I'd have to be thinking, okay, did I do the internalization step well enough before I move on to um, the next breath awareness stage? Uh, did I skip a step? Was that step done? What step's coming next? And you see, that's not inducive to a deep meditative, deep relaxed, trance, hypnotic state, call it what you want, um, to have to worry about these things. So I kind of go through the process for you so you don't have to think about it too much and you can just do it. Um, so that's with the hypnosis thing. I try to get you to relax and go to sleep. <laughs> I've had people get really angry when I do tutorials and stuff like this. Because they say, if somebody is learning about this for the first time, we don't want them learning from you because you're obviously stupid. So just in case that's true, you can just disregard what I'm saying. <laughs> You hear that? Do you know what? You see? This is why I'm single. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to start laughing. Okay. Do not have more fun in the future. <laughs> okay, so now that we've talked about hypnosis for a bit, like I said, I could go deeper into these if, if anybody cares. Now let's talk about um, yoga nidra. Um, and, and Swami Satyananada, did I pronounce that right? But uh, he learned from someone else. With, we're talking some very, very long Indian names that I can't pronounce. But um, he said it's, an, it's a guided meditation uh, to induce lucid dreams, and it has eight stages, internalization, and I kind of put my own spin on it, where you take your consciousness from way outside yourself and you listen to the, what the car is outside, listen to things far away, listen to what's in your house, listen to what's in your room, um, and pay attention to these things until you're paying attention to your body, sorry, and inside your body. Um, so you bring your consciousness from way out here and you kind of shrink it down to inside yourself and then we have Sankavala, which is intention. This is the part where you set your intention. This is my intention to have a long, sound sleep. This is my intention to have a nice, lucid dream. Um, and you can throw other stuff in, too. This is my intention is to make a million dollars. Sure. But you know, believing you're going to do it ups your chances that they've proven that. It's not 100%, but that's your chances. So why not? You don't know what's going to happen. So why not believe good things are going to happen and up your chances? You don't know bad things are going to happen. Okay, rotation of consciousness. Rotation of consciousness. Right hand, left hand. Pay attention to the back of your hand. See, you're going to take your consciousness for a tour around your body. I guess it kind of shakes it loose from your brain. So you can even, um, they usually start with one hand and say thumb of the right hand, uh, first finger, second finger, third finger. And then it can say your left shoulder, whole front of the body, left nostril, right nostril, both nostrils together. 
of bits of the mouth. You take mouth, teeth, tongue. Hey. Ooh, sorry, I'm having kitten problems. Thank God for editing. Okay, so yeah, you, you're going to rotate your consciousness around your body, um, left foot, right foot, right leg, both legs together. Um, and then, where are we? Oh, um, and then there's breath awareness. Uh, mostly, uh, classically, what you do is um, you count 27 breaths backwards, and if you make a mistake, you go to 27 again. And the goal isn't to make it to one or zero. The goal is to just be aware of your breath and, and get yourself focused on counting. We, we, it's to focus the mind. So 27 breath in and 27 breath out. 26 breath in, 26 breath out. If you ever don't feel like listening to this in a sleep hypnosis video, 25 breath in, 25 breath out. You can do this on your own too. It's kind of fun to have someone guide you if you like. You can make your own video about it too. That, that could be fun. And then, <clears throat> okay. breath awareness. Step five, manifestation of opposites. Um, so again, we're, we're kind of pulling your consciousness around a bit, shaking it loose from the brain. I'm not sure what it's doing, but I know that it works. Um, so you can make yourself very, very heavy, sink deeper into the bed, or you can become very light and feel yourself floating, hot, baking in the sun in the desert, cool, fresh breeze, cold water running over you. Um, just anything that's taking you from one sensory extreme to the other is good. And creative visualization. Uh, so I, I usually just use this as a little guided imagery thing, um, or I ask you to create your own visualization saying, what's the most relaxing place in the world for you? Uh, for me, it would be like a garden with lots of flowers and plants growing in it and, and sitting in one of those chaise lounge lawn chairs with a puppy pillow and imagine it's nighttime. To, but anything, anything. So you sort of go into um, a visualization of, a visualization of whatever turns you on for a relaxing place. Sometimes I make one up or I have you make one up. And now what have we got? Oh, then you do your send Kalapavala again. Okay, so you, you repeat your intentions again. Now here's where I'm a little different because I'm all about bedtime and all about sleep. So that's where things get a little different is the next one is externalization where you take your consciousness and it's all deep sunk within you and you bring it back out um, to waking. Um, and because I, I like people to go to sleep, um, I don't really like to be awake too much all the time. I like sleep. So I sort of, instead of bringing your consciousness out, I sort of fudge it a bit and, and tell you to go to sleep. But if, uh, if you're having a nap, maybe that's a good time to, to do that. <laughs> And uh, so, where am I now? Where am I now? So that's yoga nidra, and um, I I started practicing it um, after I wanted to find something else beyond just hypnosis for lucid dreaming. I'm always, always, always looking for new stuff. So I thought I'd practice that, and it worked like a charm. So I try to put that into video. A uh, Tibetan dream yoga. You know, you can look these up too. Easily Google, uh, Googled materials, fun. Uh, Tibetan dream yoga. Um, this is the Tibetan monks. You gotta love Tibetan monks, the uh, Buddhist type people. They've been having a lot of fun with altering their consciousness and, and stuff for a long time. And they're pretty good at it. Um, you see, this is where this gets hard, is because the first, this is where it's hard for me anyway, the first step is become lucid in a dream. Uh, so, 
by the time I've done all your sleep hypnosis, yoga nidras for, for that, I, there's a lot after that, and I don't want to make a three hour long video, but maybe I should. Tibetan dream yoga, it has steps too. Uh, step one, become lucid in the dream. Two, overcome your fears. Um, like put your hands in fire and realize that this cannot hurt you. You are completely safe and secure. You're confronting these fears and realizing that this cannot hurt you. So um, just any, this is a good time. Anything you're afraid of that you want to overcome. I kind of recently, um, I had some health problems that dealt with my coordination and, and I want to drive a car and I'm scared of, of doing that. So I bought an e-bike and everyone beware because I'm riding around on an e-bike. I'm getting a car next. So um, to before getting on the e-bike or driving the car, just to confront that fear inside myself and see myself driving and just see myself and say, you were completely safe, right? <laughs> um, or at least close enough. I can do it. I, I did have people watching me and, and doing this with me to tell me, am I safe? And they say, yes, you are. You're, I'm not seeing you get into an accident. You are coordinated enough to do this now. So, so that was good. It, it's good with stuff like that. I wasn't just going to jump on the e-bike uh, without anybody seeing me ride it. Um, yeah, they said, no, you're, you're okay. Okay, now to um, step three, which is dream and waking the same. I do this. This is good. This is good. When you're walking around in the daytime, pretend you are dreaming and see how dreaming and waking can be very much the same. See this as the bigger dream. You have your little dreams while you're sleeping. And, and walk around in the daytime pretending this is the bigger dream and see how dreaming and waking are the same. And this is, this is getting real spiritual because you know what those Tibetan monks are like. Um, now, in, in this meditation or hypnotic state or whatever you want to call it, they're doing control and change objects. Make big objects small. I, I imagine myself walking through the kitchen and making my kitchen table shrink to Barbie doll size. Um, make big objects, small, small objects, big. Turn many objects into just a few, a few into the many. Um, and uh, so that's doing that. Um, and so you see, once you're lucid dreaming, a lot of people can lucid dream, but they can't control what's in the dream. So that's what we're doing here is we're, we're controlling what's in the dream. Maybe it will give us more control in our waking life too, which would be fun. Heavy into light. Um, and then realize, number five, that your body is like these objects. It also is changeable. So your dream body, you can change that around. Make it heavy. Make it light. Make there be more than one of you. Make yourself huge. Make yourself small. Um, change And realize that you make your dream body disappear. Um, have fun with your, your body while, while in this state. So you're practicing, getting as relaxed and as close to sleep as possible and practicing so that when you are asleep, some of that stuff's there, right? And you already know what you're doing. Oh. Sorry about my cat. She's um, in my box there doing some filing with my paperwork. She's rearranging my paperwork for me. Aren't they a gift? Okay, six. Um, now, this is where we're getting um, spiritual as well. Number six, it says, see God, or Buddha, or Jesus, or who, whoever you want to see that way. Now, how I do this, um, I don't want to get into spiritual stuff too much, but um, some of us like spiritual stuff. They talk about the clear light of the void, and even um, if you're not into spiritual things, it's a pretty safe thing to go into, is I see the clear light of the void, the clarity in the nothingness, the freedom of the empty space, the, the focusing on what isn't there more than what is, um, all of that sort of stuff. 
um, the, the clear light of the void. It is just beautiful. I don't know if where you are on your journey or you're fun with your own brain, but if you've ever seen clear light, um, yeah, keep doing this stuff. You're in for a treat. Uh, clear light is a wonderful thing, and you can call it anything you want. I'm, I'm not too picky on names to tell you the truth, but I call it clear light, and it's, it's pretty. Very pretty. Now, where am I here? Six, see, concentrate without distraction. Yeah, it causes great lucid, lucid dreaming. And now I'm on to, this is long, isn't it? But now I'm on to, because this came up, because I'm having all this fun making lucid dreaming videos, and I'm lucid dreaming, and, and everyone's having a great old time. And then it, it comes up, we have a problem it comes up, we have a problem. I had a lot of people with um, problems with anxiety, panic attacks, nightmares. And hey, I show up to first do no harm. Um, so I had to sort of go into my own past about that because I started um, uh, out of body experiences, lucid dreaming, that sort of thing, very young. I was about uh, 11, 12, around that age. Uh, my father was um, busy having fun with his consciousness, and I used to like to copy him. I really looked up to my father, so I started reading the books he read and, and practicing the techniques, and, and I started uh, having out-of-body experiences and lucid dreaming. And then when I was 17, you see, I didn't read the whole books. I only read the parts that were interesting. Um, when I was 17, I had a problem where I left my body, went for a tour of my apartment, and couldn't get back in. And it terrified me. It put me into a panic, and that was it. I would not lucid dream or OBE anymore because I was terrified that I would get stuck outside my body and would not get to be, be able to go back in. And I also used to have problems with night terrors and nightmares. And... Um, just quickly, this is what I have to say about it. Um, all my, I don't have nightmares anymore. I have good dreams. I, I very, very, very rarely have a nightmare. And if I do, it's, um, it's not very frightening. I just sort of watch it go, wow, tidal wave. Yeah, that's something. Uh, and I don't get very upset or frightened by it. And I found that I also used to have problems with anxiety and I might have had some unresolved issues in my life, things that I hadn't um, properly looked at. Um, and to say yes, this is here, but mostly it was anxiety. I was just, when I learned to overcome anxiety um, and overcome my fears and, um, or at least deal with them, that's uh, not, not, not as much, not as often, not as scary and uh, I know what to do about it when it happens. So yeah, it's a lot easier now. Uh, so now that I don't have that problem so much anymore, really, that's pretty cool. And uh, the nightmares went away. So I think a lot of the stuff in nightmares um, and this anxiety stuff, part of it is um, just not knowing how really safe it is to lucid dream. I didn't realize that sleep paralysis wasn't that big a deal and that I'd get over it. And also, um, uh, settling, settling what's going on in my own life in the here and now um, and in the past and in the future and all of that stuff to keep me from doing so I, I am um, I am working on a video a sleep hypnosis video for nightmares maybe we'll do uh, I do tell people sleep hypnosis for anxiety and whatever you can find cognitive behavioral therapy that sort of thing um, to try and get over I um, anxiety and fear. Um, and there we get into shadow people, they call them, or um, some people um, think that they're leaving themselves open for uh, demonic possession, um, or they see scary people. Um, uh, this is just my take on it. Again, I'm not the be-all or end-all of knowing anything about anything. I don't follow that stuff. It's not that I'm saying it's real or not real, um, I, and I don't feel any need to debate it either way. I'm just saying that I'm very careful 
uh, what I choose to focus on and the direction um, that I focus my mental energy on. And as far as ghosts, demons, spirits, all that sort of stuff, um, that's not where I focus. Uh, where what I focus on just what is before me to do. And what I think is before me to do right now is probably shut up so you can get some sleep. What's before me to do is, um, and where I, I focus my energy, is to just make as best as I can with um, what brain cells I have left and the equipment I have, as best I can. Uh, to make you something um, that can make bedtime fun and interesting, that could be good for your brain chemistry or good for your neurology, and uh, make bedtime fun. And uh, so that's where I focus. And I try not to um, get off track too much. Uh, what I follow is helping you go to sleep. And uh, if you do have problems, uh, just, just an opinion, just an opinion. If you do have problems with these um, people, I, I really think they represent fears, part of yourself you fear, or other people you fear, or things that you fear. And I think they either stop showing up or become less scary um, if you don't have the, if you don't have fear in your life anymore, fear is not a big part of your life anymore. Um, and if you want to go with a spiritual belief, I honestly believe the calm, quiet, clear light protects us with love and 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 keeps us safe and wonderful spiritually. And uh, that's what works for me anyway. I don't know whatever works for you. Just whatever works for you is great. But yeah, what is before me to do now is to really, this has been really long. Um, if anybody does want to hear more about one of these, um, let me know. Or if you'd like uh, to suggest what if this should go into a sleep hypnosis video. That sort of stuff's helpful. I don't reply to every comment. I just don't like the comments page to be all about me. <laughs> Um, and having, you know, button in with my two cents all over the place. A lot of my own personal opinions and stuff I I really find immensely boring. I do. Because I'm just a, 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 a very average person. Um, there's, there's nothing that fascinating um, about me that I need to get out there much. So I do read, love, and appreciate every comment. Um, even the ones that I have to remove and block the user real quick, but that's rare. That's rare. Um, and I don't do that just because you criticized. It has to be like blatant pornography and just vicious for me to do that. Usually I just leave them all up. But anyhow, again, good night, people, um, person. Let's let's make you one person. I, I feel I feel a lot better dealing with just one person at a time. And um, for you, uh, if you're sleeping alone, if you have traffic noise like me, <laughs> that's kind of annoying. I don't know, maybe if you have ASMR. But uh, yeah, I just like to uh, send, in my heart, I would like to feel love for you. And I know I don't know you, but it just feels good to feel that. So I do that, and I know um, I don't know if you're a man or a woman, and I don't know how old you are, and I don't know, um, I don't know what color hair you have or how much money you have. I don't even know what country you're in, but I know you're a person, and um, so am I. <laughs> <My time. laughs> and uh, yeah, it's and it's bedtime, and I want you to have a wonderful night's sleep, and. Uh, I want you to relax, be loved, be comfortable, and know you're not alone. You're never ever alone, not really. And I will be thinking about you when I go to bed tonight and sending you through the airwaves, if you believe in that kind of thing. I'm, I'm sending my love. And yeah, take care. Good night. Sleep well.